Hey everyone, Doug from Convology. Today we're doing a live landing page build. Uh, recently on the Thrive blog, they featured a blog post about uh, building simple landing pages, some for products that are a little bit cheaper. And one of the landing pages that they featured was the Smart from Scratch landing page here on the screen. Uh, this one's from Pat Flynn at Smart Passive Income. It's a very simple landing page. Uh, as you can see here, nice big header, um, nice and clean, lots of white space, um, some good imagery. Uh, it's actually probably built with the Teachable platform because if I scroll down here, uh, you'll see he's using Teachable to deliver his course. Um, very simple, but uh, but something you might want to do yourself. So I thought today we'd do a live landing page build where I essentially recreate this entire landing page to show you how it is possible for you to do that yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. The way I'm going to build this landing page is using Thrive Architect. It's a page builder, um, soon to be uh, worked into the Thrive Theme Builder, um, as well as a lead capture. It's, it's essentially a marketing toolbox for somebody that uh, wants to build websites, make them look better, um, build landing pages. So what we'll do, we'll take a look at this uh, website. I've already downloaded all the images and I'll cut and paste the text. Um, but first things first, you'll want to get Thrive Architect. Um, I'll have more info on that throughout my website. Um, but first thing you'll want to do is open up a blank landing page. So let's go to that right now. Okay, so we have a blank landing page here on my website. And looking at the Smart from Scratch landing page, I just want to point out a couple of things. This is what I do whenever I look at creating a fresh landing page or if I'm going to do one of these live builds. Uh, you'll notice that we have a very simple navigation here at the top uh, with a logo and a, um, a login or a sign up button. And as you scroll, uh, you'll notice that that header becomes sticky. Um, so that's something we'll want to recreate. You'll also notice that there's an opt-in here to join the waitlist for the course. He powers his by ConvertKit. I'll show you how you can power yours with anything uh, and then use Thrive Leads or Thrive Architect to send those opt-ins. A couple other things to note here, he's got uh, some imagery. You can see you can click and drag, so that's an image. Nice image of himself. Some icons. Nothing too hard here, some big background images. Um, we probably won't create this uh, course component here uh, simply because that's from Teachable, um, but obviously we can do something else with like Thrive Apprentice. Um, we'll go ahead and skip this part, um, but I can show you how you could uh, embed that actually. And a couple videos. Um, so we'll do our best here to use some placeholders for those videos since we can't embed his videos in our landing page. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is to make sure that you have your fonts chosen. I'm going to use the same fonts that Pat uses and you'll want to have all of your images. I'm going to use his. Uh, so what we'll do here is we'll add a new element and we'll insert a background section, stretch that to full width. We'll run a 1200 pixels wide for the content maximum width. We will go to the background style. We'll choose image. You'll see here I have all the images. Let's uh, grab this one. That's his big hero image that he has and we'll expand that to make that bigger. Start To start things off though, let's go ahead and set that maybe with a 100 pixels uh, padding on the inside. And we'll expand that as we need it. And we know that he has um, a title. So we'll drag some text in with our text element. And before I go any further, let me just quickly show you how we'll handle all of the text. On the right hand side here in the navigation, you'll click on the settings gear and go to the global options. And this is where we can change things like our header, our footer, and importantly, the fonts. So if I click on this pencil icon, you'll see that I can edit all of my fonts globally for this landing page. I've already gone ahead and done this, but what you'll do is you'll, for example, if I want to change the H1, I'll click on that. And on the left-hand side here, I've chosen the Proxima Nova font. And to do that, um, I'll do a write-up on this on the blog as well, but I'm using the custom fonts plugin that integrates very, very easily with Thrive Architect. And you'll just click through all of your headings. You'll set them. Again, I've set them already, um, but it's very easy to do. So whatever fonts you want to use, that's where you'll set them globally if you don't want to have to fuss with editing every font. Um, for example, we'll come back here to our text element that we just added, and I'm going to do the outside in principle by clicking on my background section and going to topography, and I'm going to make all the text white and hit apply. Come back here again to my text element. I'm going to make this an H1. And let's see, his title said 
smart from scratch. Make sure we put the uh, registered trademark in there. And we'll backspace that. Great, he had that centered. Okay, now we want to have a second heading. So we'll do Google Fonts. There it is, Pathway Gothic 1. We'll leave it at 400. We'll center it. We'll make that our little bit bigger. I believe he has his probably around 32. And we'll type in his heading. How to find a winning business idea and land your first customer. You'll notice that this is in all caps because I had uh, mistakenly made it an all caps option, but you can change that very easily here. With the click of a button, I'm only capitalizing the very first letter of each of those. And I think I want to add a little bit of spacing here. So I'm gonna do a one pixel space. I think that looks a little, a little bit more like his. And we can go to layout and options, give this a little bit more space here, maybe, maybe 20. That looks nice and clean like his. Okay, now it's time to add the video. And normally I would search for the video element and I would drag that in and I would go to main options. He uses Wistia, which is a great host, and I'd paste it in. However, his videos are protected and I can't put those in there. So instead, we're just gonna, for the sake of this video, cheat a little bit. I'm just gonna put the image of his video in instead. It's totally fine. And we're going to lay that out center and it's definitely not this big. So just for the sake of, just for the sake of this video, we'll put that there. Expand it out a little bit. He's probably got about, I don't know, 60 pixels. And we're just going for a rough approximation here. Um, it might actually be closer to 70. Rough approximation of what he has going for his, for his website. And then remember below this, if we go back to the page, he had his get notified when a sale reopens. I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy that text now. So let's insert a content box below our video, air quotes video. And our content box is about the same width of this. So make that 818 or let's just make this 800 just, just to keep things simple. So we'll make our content box uh, main options make that also 800 width. And we will also come back in here to layout and position and center that. And under background style, his is like this grayish color. And I use a Chrome extension called Colorzilla. I'll put a link in the blog post for this, but it lets you grab the color off of anything on the page. So for this, we just click on Colorzilla, click on what we want, hex code F9, F9, F9. But we can now just simply come back to this and go to our background style. We're gonna fill that with a color. There it is, looks great. Okay, let's put in some text now into our content box. We actually already had some text, we'll use that later. Uh, let's make all of our text, again, outside in principle because it's currently following. If you remember, we set the color for all of our topography and our background section is white. We need to edit that, come back into the content box, not the text elements. We'll make those a little darker, maybe um, something like, I don't know, 333, three, three. that looks good. And we will just use our basic, our basic font here. And it said, get notified when the sale reopens. Okay, we'll center that. And show you another trick. This is what I use to find out what font he uses. There's a great Chrome extension called what font. So you just simply enter into what font Chrome extension and then you hover over the text. He's using Helvetica for this text, which is strange. It's probably because this is a convert kit embed. You'll notice the rest of his site uses Proxima and Pathway Gothic. So we will just mimic this in what looks good. Uh, I'm just gonna use Open Sans instead of Helvetica. It's a lot simpler that way. Um, so we'll come into here. Let's just make this under uh, topography. Um, you know what, we'll just keep it with Proxima. We'll just inherit the font that we're using. That's even simpler than changing it. Okay, so uh, real cool again about what font. I come in here and I click on the font that I want to change or I want to evaluate. He's using uh, 28 pixels, 33 line height, 500 weight. So that's really easy. We'll just come in here and we'll make our font 33 pixels. We don't need to worry too much about anything else. I'm gonna copy the text here, 
that was center aligned. A little bit of margin here. Why not? Do 15. Looks about right. We'll do the same thing here. Maybe 15. Okay, and his content box had a little bit more padding than ours has. Let's go for maybe maybe 30. To change all those numbers at once, just click the lock. Again, super simple to edit. That looks good. So now we're going to add the lead element. Uh, first thing that we'll do is we will come up under here and search for lead. And we're going to use just the simple Thrive Architect one, not worry about setting up a Thrive lead um, to make that happen. Now, a couple things. When doing um, a Thrive Architect form, we can't edit a lot. If you hit edit form elements, we can change the way things look, but we can't really remove any of these fields until we connect it to a service that we're, we're telling basically what we want, um, what we want to collect, right? Name and email. For the sake of this, we just want the person's email address, not their name. So we need to connect it to a service in order to remove that. So I'm going to hit done and I'm going to connect the form to a service. We're going to choose a new API connection, come under API connections and click add a new connection. We'll select an app. Uh, again, if we were doing ConvertKit, we can do it there. Um, if we were doing uh, another one like uh, MailChimp, that's really simple. So let me go ahead and get this connected to MailChimp just for the sake of this example, and we'll pick right back up. Okay, so I've connected my MailChimp API, and I am now going to choose my fields. I don't want name, so I'm just going to delete that, and we're just gonna keep the email field. We'll hit next. For the sake of this, we'll show a success notification, but in Thrive Architect, you can do things like reload the page or redirect to a custom URL to show the message, keeping it simple. You'll now see that, ta-da, we just have the email field. So let's edit our form elements now. And we want that button to be to the right, like it was in, in uh, Pat's page. We'll shrink this down. Now we're gonna edit some of these fields to make them look a little bit closer to what Pat has. So we'll click on the email field, go to layout and position, I uh, probably want this to be a little bit bigger, maybe 15 padding on the, on each of those. Uh, come to the button, make the button 15 as well. Super simple. Uh, maybe the topography, we'll do a little bit bigger. That looks good. And let's change some of these borders and corners. They're currently this green color. I think we can just make them a simple gray, close enough to what Pat's using our button. Um, we want to change the button details. His button was, let's grab the exact color. It was like a bluish. Just click on ColorZilla, hover over the button, wait till it loads. Come back in here and paste in the hex code that it automatically put on our clipboard and hit apply. And his button, do you remember what it said? It was join the waitlist. Perfect. That text, let's make that a little bit bigger. Something uh, about right there. Looks fine by me. And then uh, when that looks good and you like what that looks like, just hit done. And he had his little powered by convert kit, so why not? We'll add our powered by Thrive Architect. We'll put an exclamation. Okay, and just make this look zero pixels there. We'll shrink this down. Cool. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Um, again, we're not going for exactness here, just something very, very similar. And great. Okay, let's go to the next section on the landing page, which is this Will Your Business Idea Work section. So you'll notice that his page is broken up into sections. You have this big white section, we're gonna make a background section for that. Then it goes to this gray color, then white, then gray, etc. So we're gonna we're gonna follow that same pattern. And we're going to while I'm here, grab that. We're going to grab this uh, this text. So he's got this uh, reddish text here. So to see what color that is, we can grab our what font, and copy that hex code there. It's another cool reason to have what font. Let's go in now and back to our landing page and add in a background section. Uh, you can either drag that in or you can just click it and it will automatically add it as the last element on the page. So let's, while I'm thinking about this, there was a little more space here actually. 
So layout and position. Let's go to about about 60, I'd say he probably had. That looks good. Good enough, right? Okay. Come into the background section. And I like to do this with all my background sections when I start off. I like to start off with something like 60 pixels of, of padding. Stretch it to the full width of the page. We can add more uh, when we want to. We'll come in here and we'll add some text. Let's do an H2 this time and center that. And his text was, will your business idea work? And then what did he have below that? He had more text that said, learn how to test it. And that was, we'll go with an H3, but I wanna make a change here. Just change the font a little bit. Center that, great. Learn how to test it. And then that was that red color, right? So let's make that the red color. And then he had that lightning bolt. So let's add the lightning bolt image in. There it is. Come in here, we'll go to layout and position and center that. Already looking pretty good. I think he had a little bit more, a little bit more space here. Maybe 10 pixels. That looks fine. And then we'll add more text in here. Let's get the text off of his page. We'll just paste it in. Awesome. Extra space there. All of his text was center aligned. And his text, if we go back to the page, was a lot more narrow than ours. So let's go ahead and, and you can adjust this at the page level. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's probably the better way to do it. Um, but you can also come in here under layout and position under width, the max width. Let's go ahead and shrink that. Uh, line it center and shrink it. He has his just a little bit more than his main copy. So I bet he has it somewhere like 800. That looks, that looks pretty good. I think it's actually a little bit more. So let's go back to our text and he has that uh, two lines. That actually looks closer to what he has. So we'll go with 750. Perfect. Okay. So now uh, on his page, does that look good? That looks pretty darn close to what he has actually. So we will keep that just like it is and save our work. This little notification. Let's go ahead and add in another background section. This time we're going to go with that, uh, that grayish color before I do that. Just go ahead and add in another little 60 pixels. Let's come back here and grab our colorzilla. And let's grab that. It's the F7, F7, F7. And I'm going to speed things up here as I work through this. You can go ahead and watch along. And as we get to something new, I'll go ahead and stop it and explain a little bit more. So just go ahead and watch me do this in fast forward super speed. Okay, now we are going to copy this next section. That looks pretty good with the image right here. Again, nothing too crazy. Uh, one thing to point out, he has bullet points that look a little bit smaller. So I'll pull out what font, and this looks like it's the 17 pixel bullet points versus the 24 pixel kind of like, he's got a lot of font sizes going on here. His normal font size is 18, his bullet point font is 17. This lead in font is 24. We'll do our best to match that. He's gonna mimic that throughout the rest of the next sections. But let's go ahead and make this section as close as we can.
Okay, now we want to add, if we go to back to the page here, we need to add another section. But instead of recreating all of that, I'm actually just going to go to my background section and I'm just going to hover over it. And in the upper right hand corner here of the background section, I'm going to click duplicate. And voila, it completely duplicated this entire section. So all I have to do is come in here and change the background style, which if you remember was F7, F7, F7 to that gray. Click on the image. Let's replace it with uh, the pencil. Apply. And now we just have to change out the text. So uh, the text for this one was what you will learn. And the subheading was success from the ground up. And now we just have to swap out the text. And when you cut and paste sometimes, you lose your bullet points. That does it. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing for all the other sections. And when I get done with that, I will come back and explain the next step. Okay, now we're in the uh, background section that has a big background image. So it's very similar to what we did with the original one. Um, we'll come in here and we'll do all of our uh, exact same things that we did before. We'll choose our image and we'll hit apply. Again, my own little um, personal styles to come in and add some padding. I think it looks pretty good. Um, but what we'll do is uh, now we'll just come back in and add a new image because he starts to do things a little different. If I jump back to his example, again, this is a different font. This is a different size and he has this box again. So we can cut and paste that one. Um, but otherwise the rest of that's going to be a little bit different. So let's just add in our image. That's the light bulb. Center that. And I think we probably need a little bit more padding. So let's go to the hundred like we did in our big hero image. And his text here is Proxima 30 pixels. So we'll add in our text. We will keep it this, but we'll have to change the font size. And we'll center that. And it says, find and test your ideas now. He had that in all caps. And again, the outside in principle, we'll go to our background section. We'll change the font white so that we only have to do it once. And then we'll add in the image of the lightning again. Layout and position, center. Okay, great, now he's got some text below that. Right below our lightning bolt. And that text, coming back here, is size 24. Again, with the different font sizing here. And he has that centered, and I believe there is a space right there. Perfect, a little paragraph break. Uh, now we need to bring down our uh, opt-in box. We're just going to copy and paste that one here, duplicate, and then content box, grab the little draggable icon, keep holding, keep scrolling. Great, right below our text there. That looks pretty darn good if I do say so. In fact, that's actually lining up pretty nicely. Great, okay. Uh, that is done for that section. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, we won't be putting in this exact same section here um, with uh, his, essentially his teachable courses. Uh, but if you were going to, uh, you can embed some code in there from your courses. You could put a picture of what they look like. Um, this is really anything that you want to put in here. So what we're going to do is just skip over this section. Um, I, you know, for the sake of this, I'll just put a screenshot of this. So I'll just grab my dropper, and I'm going to just save this section right here and just insert a picture. All right, I'm going to speed things up again and keep working on these sections, and I'll jump back when we've got something else to show.
Okay, so now we're on the frequently asked questions section, and uh, a couple of things we want to do here. If we go back to the to the page, you'll see that he has an icon floated to the left of his text. I'll show you how to do that, and he has just some normal text in here, and it's on a white background. It's all pretty narrow, um, so I'll show you. First, copy this. I'll show you how. Um, we'll go ahead and do this one. His instead of doing the text element, uh, the other option is if you want the text or all the stuff within a background section to fall within a certain content maximum width, we just come to the main options of the background section and do what we've basically been doing on all of these, which is just set it to a maximum content width of about 750. Uh, so first things first, um, let's go ahead and take care of this. This is that 30 pixel frequently asked questions. Um, let's see, was that a bold? No, I don't think it was bold, doesn't matter. Uh, but he has that icon, right? That question mark, kind of like a FAQ icon. So we'll just go in here into our elements and we'll search for icon, drag it on top of the text, wait for it to fetch the data of the, the fonts and search for a question. And there's the perfect one, this question mark in the circle. And let's make that 40-ish. Well, he's probably smaller. He's probably, probably like 34. Four. Good enough. Okay, so then we're going to go to the uh, layout and position, and we're going to align it left, and we're going to tell it to float. Perfect. And add just a little bit of margin. 10 looks fantastic. And there it is. We've essentially made the frequently asked questions. Let's add in the text right below and paste it in. Yikes, that looks like a mess. So let's Let's control Z that, and instead just normal paste it in. Also looks like a complete mess. So we might have to manually format this one, um, which is fine. So let's go ahead and do um, some question, uh, some Q and A optimizing here. So we'll... Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to manually format this because it's not cutting and pasting cleanly. I'll go ahead and do that, and then we will jump in for the final sections. Okay, that looks. That looks pretty good. It's pretty similar to how he has it. Uh, okay, and let's do the last section. Uh, again, this is going to be one of these background sections. If I scroll back up, um, it's going to be like our gray one. So let's grab this one and duplicate it. And then just drag it all the way down to the bottom. Underneath our existing background section. And this one is the money book, the, ta-da, you're making money now because you took my course. Start proving it to yourself. It doesn't have a subheadline there. And this text is all this bigger font. So we'll just delete all of that. Then align it all center. Actually, we'll align it all of it. That looks pretty good. And last but not least, we are going to duplicate this section. Below that background section. And we'll leave this video. If we go here to his website, it's another video. Just for the sake of not having to create another one of these images, I'll just leave it like that. But we'll just change this to get the support you need. talks about his course a little bit more. And then at the very end, he's got his last little content box. We're almost done, guys, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that navigation. Okay, now we are ready to look at doing the header and the footer. So first thing that we'll do is we'll click on the gear icon. Well, no, first thing we're gonna do is save our work because we haven't been saving like we should. We're gonna save our work. Okay, now let's do the header, so the gear icon brings up the settings and let's go under header. No header has been added. We're going to create a new one. I've actually saved one called smart from scratch. Um, we're gonna choose the basic dark because why? Well, this is the basic looking dark one. So we'll choose basic dark. I've already done that. So I'm just going to insert this. Great, there's our header. We need to make a few changes though. So let's click on edit header. Perfect, and we want it to match the screen width here. A 
like that. And layout and position. That looks good. Okay. Instead of uh, the logo being typed out, just delete whatever they have here in the, the basic setup. And let's put in the Smart Passive Income logo. There it is. That looks great. We don't need this extra padding on top and bottom. It's a little bit much. Um, we have a navigation here. We can probably actually get rid of that because that navigation is not needed. So we will find the custom menu and we'll delete that. We're going to put something else in there instead. Again, we're getting closer and closer. I think this is actually smaller. Um, he has a very narrow, very narrow header. Let's add in two things. He has that like sign up login and he has a button. So let's add our text and let's add our button. Okay. Let's go back to the page. There's our sign up. Colorzilla. Oh no took away the nav. Let's scroll up. There we go. Colorzilla. Pick a color. Grab a smart enough green. I could have pulled it from his logo too. I bet you they're the same. And it was a round button. So let's choose the rounded button. Hit apply. And main options. Let's go with our really cool green looking button color. And let's go to layout and position and kill off all this extra padding that we do not need. And again, we're going to choose with the button. Okay, now another pro tip time. I recently wrote an article on this on the blog. It's all about floating items within a column. You'll see we're working in a two column layout here. In order to do that, you have to put things inside of a content box, which I didn't do. But you're gonna go to search for content box and let's just start dragging our elements into that content box because we cannot do anything with floating until that's done. So now we can float that button to the right. Perfect. And we can tell our text here, sign up, log in, wonderful looking. We can right align that, go to our button, add a little bit of padding, maybe 20 pixels. That looks great. And within our columns, Great, starting to look really good here. This text is probably smaller, probably like that. And our text, zero. Probably just scoot that down a little bit. Our button's way too big as well. We can shrink that after we edit the text. So he said, sign up. Just like, there we go, sign up. Um, let's go ahead and change some of these button options though. I think his button was a little bit wider. So we'll, something like that. That's close enough for the purposes of this. That's looking pretty good. Okay, we have some extra margin here we need to clean up. It's probably within our content box. Yes, it absolutely is. We don't need the extra 20. That's looking pretty slick. Okay, so when I'm done editing my header, uh, but we're not done yet, we are, we'll hit done. And then with this header, we need to do one thing. We need to adjust kind of how it functions, what it does when we scroll down, right? So first off, we don't want it to be over the content or do we want it to be over content, push content? Let's, let's do over content. If I remember what his looked like. No, he had, he had a lot of space, so we'll push. We're going to push the content down and we're going to need to adjust how that header responds. First, I think I see some pixels here, so we're going to get rid of those. That looks better. Okay. Good enough. Okay. So to make it a sticky header, we have to go to edit header and there's a unique section here under header options. I lied under scroll behavior. We can make it static, which is your standard, just stand still header, we can make it sticky or appear on scroll. Well, if we choose sticky and I save my work, I hit save and I preview this, sticky is never going to go away. And you can see we have some fun issues. 
Sticky's never going to go away. That's cool. I mean, that's kind of like what he had. Um, we have other options here. Um, we can edit the header again and go to scroll behavior. We can make it scroll appear on scroll up, which is not what he had, but I'll show you what that, how that works. Um, just hit done, save work, preview. So if you scroll down, you'll notice the header's not appearing, but as soon as we start to scroll up, it does. Well, it looks like the closest that we can get in Thrive Architect is the sticky header. So we're just going to go with a purely sticky header. His is like a sticky on delay. Uh, we're not going to achieve that um, with Thrive Architect, but pretty darn close enough. For some reason, this text is not wanting to play nice. So I am going to just save that and hope it has changed white. There we go. Sometimes you have to force the color. I don't know why. Um, okay, let's, let's do a walkthrough here. So here's our landing page. Or no, let's do this in reverse. Here's his page. Okay. Scroll down. All right. Let's look at ours. You know, you'd have to look pretty darn close to see that this was not actually the exact same landing page. Few subtle style differences, some font hiccups here and there, padding, margin, yada, yada, yada. I forgot the footer, but suffice it to say, this looks almost exactly like the Smart Passive Income, Smart from Scratch uh, landing page. And it's only taken us, what, about 45 minutes to make that happen? That's pretty good. So once you collect all your photos and your font choices, if you really want to create a landing page like the pros, and I'd consider Pad a Pro, you just basically have to find a template that you like, find a layout, and just start dragging and dropping. Now, I don't condone completely copying people. That's not what this is about, right? This is about two things. One, learning from people who are successful and using something that works, um, but also learning how to use Thrive Architect to do the things that you really want to accomplish, right? Some of these things may not have been immediately intuitive. Some of these things you may have learned for the first time. The way that you get better with Thrive Architect, just like anything, is practice. So I highly recommend that maybe you take the time to go and try to recreate this yourself. You're probably going to learn something from it. And I encourage you to go and look at other websites and create other landing pages. Uh, the, the best way to get better is to just use the tool. So um, moving forward, I uh, will do a lot more of these live landing page builds. Um, if you'd like to see this kind of uh, landing page creation tutorial video, please, by all means, leave a comment on this blog post, on this YouTube video. Um, it lets me know that you're interested, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. So again, this is Doug at Convology, where I do Thrive Architect and Thrive Theme plugin tutorials, as well as digital marketing and conversion advice, and we look at other plugins too and stuff. Um, so again, thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions.